What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Hogwarts Legacy gameplay stream. I'm Chandler Wood, Community Manager here at Avalanche Software, and we've got a lot of really exciting stuff to show you today. But before we get into showing you the game and gameplay, I have a few wonderful guests that, that I need to introduce you to. Uh, first up, we have our community guest host. He brings you the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy content. Uh, he's the local Merlin conspiracy theorist. Uh, guilty as charged, yes. <laughs> One half of Expecto Go, yeah. James Whitehead. Uh, thanks, Chandler. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> I'm James Whitehead of Expecto Go, bringing you guys the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy <laughs> content. And uh, I am one half of Expect Go, the better half, uh, my wife Sue, uh, represents that other half. So um, I'm excited to be here, and thank you, uh, Avalanche Software, for inviting me. I cannot wait to go over this game. Like, I just got to <laughs> say that. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, and we've got two people from the studio, just two of the many people bringing this thing together, uh, the magic of Hogwarts Legacy. Game director, Alan Tu. Hello, everyone. And senior environment artist and Hogwarts expert, Boston Madsen. So thank you for, for taking time out of your very busy schedules right now to sit down with us to help us show everybody gameplay. Uh, so what we're going to be showing you today, first, the character creator, because you're, it's your legacy, and <laughs> you have to create yourself when you get into, uh, to, to get into Hogwarts and bring your whole authentic self to Hogwarts. So we're going to show you that character creator. Then we're going to dive into a tour of Hogwarts, and it is... It's just a small tour of Hogwarts, right? Because <laughs> Hogwarts is huge. Hogwarts is really big. Uh, so uh, we're going to be showing you a little bit, but it's still a lot. So, <laughs> and finally, ending up with uh, combat. A little taste of combat, a little taste of how all that works. Let's um, go. Let's just go. a little taste, yeah. Uh, so we're excited to get there. But again, first and foremost, we need to get into this character creator. And James, with you here, we wanted to... Uh, let you create this character. So, Andrew, who is going to be doing all of our gameplay capture today, uh, <laughs> is uh, going to be handing you the controller. Oh my gosh. All right, I won't break anything. <laughs> all right, so what are we looking at right here on this screen? Um, these are your presets. So a lot like uh, other games, there's there's some initial settings that you can put up Put, uh, choose for your character mm -hmm. um, that just kind of get them into like the ballpark of what you want to be, who you want to be, and what you want to change. Oh man. And then once you're in that ballpark, all of the other tabs let you dial that in, uh, be exactly who you want to be. It's our, our goal with this is to make sure that for anyone that fantasized about bringing themselves to the school yeah. for the very first time, yeah. that they feel like they have the options in order to represent who they are and, and essentially bring themselves to Hogwarts or whatever character they want to bring to Hogwarts. Oh my God, and options galore. Uh, do you mind if I try to put myself in here right quick? It's all about you Okay, too. okay, 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 all right, all right. So, oh, okay, yeah, that's me, that's me. We're here, we're here, that's me right there. All right, so let's, that's step one. We're so, pretty close, but let's like, let's look at, let's look at everything okay, here. Okay, let's you know, go let's over play here. Play around with some of these options, like really. All right, so what are we looking at with this option over here with the tab? I see face stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the different faces that you saw in the, in the previous screen, all those mm -hmm. faces are are choices that you have here. So you can, now you're just kind of getting into the details in yeah. your face shape, in your skin color. Um, and then because we knew a lot of people going right in are gonna want it right away, even yeah. though it's an option later in the game, yeah. uh, you can collect different types of glasses, put them on later. Uh, we give you some options right up front if you wanna have glasses for your character. Oh man, oh my gosh, look at the structure of the faces with this. Wow, you guys thought of every crazy. I like that. I don't think my face is that skinny, but I think we'll go with that. I think we'll go that route. Uh, and down here is this. Those are your glasses this there. Gla yeah. Oh, so we started. We could we could go Harry Potter if we want. Off the job. <laughs> oh man! And this is just some of the options, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so through the course board. of the game, there's a lot. There's a lot of different uh, options that you'll keep unlocking. Okay. So as part of kind of like gear for the character, there's lots of different classes. There's even masks. There's all kinds of things uh, over the course of the game. I like how it's all Victorian era though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right right. Such centric. a good call. Such a good call. Oh my gosh. All right. So now, oh my. Oh, we can go sleek on this one with the hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I spend a lot of time here just like dreaming about my different characters. And oh my gosh. Be. The pony. 
I, the thing I'm always amazed by whenever I see any aspects of Hogwarts Legacy's character creator is just the texture. And like you even adding the bounce with the hair moving around. Yo, that kind of looks like Hermione a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna just like Fred, I'm not Fred. And we can just go, can I go like Tonks purple or green a little bit? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Oh, I like that. That is cute. Oh, <laughs> okay, so uh, little behind the scenes, I used to have this type of hair like way, way, way back, but. It wasn't purple. <laughs> I wanted uh, silver tips, so that was the closest I got to any color, but oh my gosh, this is so cool. So you literally can bring yourself, like it's, it's a myriad of textures and different hairstyles here. All right, so now we're getting over here to uh, play around with some of the- These are more subtle options. Okay. We've got freckles, moles, um, different things like uh, when it comes to your complexion, like darker eyes, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. like some shading on the cheeks. Oh man. You guys literally thought of it <laughs> with this. Yeah, I do have a bit of fun with that. And then the scars are, are one of those options where, um, you know, Harry had his own unique star, yeah. scar, but you can come in with Yours. different scar options. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Look at that. I didn't even see that. Oh, those are my favorite, the, the, the eyebrow scars. Yeah, yeah. Love those, love yeah. those. Yeah, you look kind <laughs> it's of a like, classic. yeah, you look kind of just like tough. <laughs> so now we're over here. Oh man, this, you guys, this is so sick. Again, getting more subtle here, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. really like dialing in that face to, to <laughs> really get, get, get yeah. your. I don't know how uh, revealing like I want to be with my facial uh, features now. Just like, yeah, I kind of have a big face. Yeah, my eyebrows kind of sit kind of low. <laughs> but I mean, literally, you have. So so many options just starting the game. I feel like I'm going to be here like forever. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> and then this this final tab here, this is where you kind of bring your whole character together. You know, this is where you finalize everything. You're not choosing your house here. Okay. That's not yet. That uh, was a theory. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, here's where you bring, uh, you, you choose voice one or voice two, which is more kind of a masculine or a feminine one, voice. Man. And then even within I that, changing your pitch, oh, with the, the pitch slider. Oh, it's a subtle slider, but, yeah. but you can hear it. Concerned about. That was quite something. And so you can kind of make out the differences. But yeah, you choose which kind of voice that you want. Uh, you'll be selecting your difficulty here. For today, we'll just go normal because okay. Andrew's going to be uh, taking us through some of the experiences with combat later. And we can talk a little more about difficulty, yeah, with, with combat and how that plays in. That but but I think the, the important thing here is like if, if for people who aren't gamers, especially, right. story mode is a way to get into this without being worried about like, oh, do I need to be good at games? Like, no, just enjoy this game. It's and I will put expecto and then go. Uh, <laughs> we're good, we're good, awesome. And then uh, whether you want to be witch or wizard. <laughs> Amazing. What'd you think, character creator? We're good? I'm good. I'll let yo, let's explore Hogwarts and let's get into some All right, through the magic of uh, using, using a dev kit, we're gonna be loading up a, a save a little later in. Um, so that we can show you more about Hogwarts and give you that taste of combat. All right, Andrew's got some gameplay pulled up for us here. We are uh, starting out, James, there there you are. You're wearing the house fanatic <laughs> robes uh, from the from the account linking. Thank you, thank you, I, I do look good. Uh, and this is our first look at the Hufflepuff common room, I'm assuming. I mean, the, dorm room. The dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. But well, Alan, what are, we, what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah, so um, right now we know there's been a lot of questions about uh, about, about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay, okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravello is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. 
on the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not going to be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, <laughs> like what are all the spells and what I, can we do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do want to make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. And then uh, on the left side, that thing that has the L1 button next to it, uh -huh. that's another thing where we don't want to spoil, but basically that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of magical tools that you're going to be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health, and basically there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of mini maps because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the mini map oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. of okay. our HUD. But really immerse yourself. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, <laughs> Very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's so, part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out into. We, we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. You can customize that experience right away. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. This, all, oh, the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the <laughs> it's fireplace. Kind of, it's kind of real earthy vines. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very earthy. Which is, which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah, right? Yeah, Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw's air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. And we wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So if it feels earthy, we've got a little earthen passageway. That's, that's what we were, hopefully yeah. it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're going to be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects, though. Like, looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. It's tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's going to make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably called Revelio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up in okay. the corner. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we had to ask ourselves, what? <laughs> <laughs> Continue, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> there may be something you may or may not be able to tickle there. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our game, we had to answer the question, you know, we're a late fifth year. What does that mean? How do we catch up to the other students? Okay, okay. And so we have an answer to that question, and, and it's given to you by the staff. So there's something that we call the Wizard's Field Guide that's granted to you early on in the game. And the Wizard's Field Guide is how, how you actually work on catching up with the other students. So Andrew, if you hit pause for me up here before you push forward a little bit, you can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your wizard's field guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid yeah. over it. Right? Okay, okay. And you can see that on your level as well. So that the field guide has this magical property of looking out into the world around you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's on loan from the Ministry of Magic and the professors so have cool. granted it to you as a late fifth year student is because they want it to help you catch up to the other kids. Mm -hmm. And its magical property is to discover different opportunities to learn and grow all around you. So the way it works is, as you discover gameplay in the game, 
it actually recognizes that as a challenge, which is kind of On the bottom. locked into there. Okay. And Andrew, if you go in there, you'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. And you can see field guide pages are on there as yeah, well. Yeah, 1%, so, we, uh, yeah. we unlock that one field guide page. Yeah. That, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school mm -hmm. and kind of hides itself with different types of challenges and different things to do around the school <laughs> that you're that actually going so cool. to interact with to help you grow as a wizard and practice your spells. And so that thing that we just saw is not just a field guide challenge and a way to earn yeah. XP, it's also something that, uh, that players can use to learn about the school as they're traveling around. They spot these little secret facts and they can kind of play a little bit of a game discovering all of them and they're there are, there are over a hundred field guide pages just in Hogwarts alone. Oh, so. A little oh. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. We're not gonna... Circular staircase. All, all the portraits. The yeah. And I did notice the flu flame just ignite right there, which was so cool. Yeah. Oh man. Fast travel points there. House hour glasses. We had to, <laughs> I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? But, but that they're there just like in the books. Yes. Right it's next to the to Great Hall. Lore. It's a nod yeah. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the game. Yeah, we, it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but yeah. but we nod to them as as part of the narrative. Over to the right part of there, the Andrew world. was teasing. That's the uh, Great oh, Hall over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there. We're, he's just kind of like, ah, ah. <laughs> no. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page. You know, just again, showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and that's a shot straight from the trailer too. <laughs> that part right there, I, I recognize that. I might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, um, and, and this must be summertime because I know these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of it. I get surprised by it all the time. <laughs> the sentient the magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh man, and we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate, just to kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle's been here for hundreds of years, so just kind of <laughs> the moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it. And oh my gosh. That landscape, that this, Scottish. This location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR. And yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm gonna tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> oh my uh, God. But this is uh, th this grand entryway right here coming down into uh, a really kind of central area. Yeah, we're coming upon the central hall and we pointed out the greenhouse outside mm -hmm. and, and we'll notice when we get down there that it's on the right. This and is a big hub of the school. Like it, it's a big castle, but um, it is designed so you shouldn't get very lost. This is kind of a grand central station. <laughs> I love that. that. I each love that. direction, you know, it's green over there, so the greenhouse is over there. Transfiguration courtyard, you know, library straight ahead. So it's kind of a the hub oh my of God. a lot of the castle. Even the color visually, you could just tell, okay, green, oh, green greenhouse. Oh my God. I should, a lot of it will be subconscious, but yeah. it'll help you really feel, learn the castle and mm -hmm. feel like you know your way around. <laughs> that's, that's not to say that it's easy to learn. All of us here still get pretty lost in it, <laughs> it on a daily castle. basis. It it's a really castle. <laughs> it's a... Great point. <laughs> I love that Andrew's uh, definitely teasing a lot of things here. I'm noticing he's swinging the camera this way and that. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got this grin on his face over there that's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. That statue is from doing. the reveal trailer, that, that dragon. Oh my gosh. This is another location where the students will gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an opportunity uh, to uh, talk to somebody, get a, get a yeah. quest giver here.
Is everything all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumour is that a former headmistress, Professor Moll, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. So it's kind of side quest are really, it's a cool way to interact you with to your fellow students, with perhaps other teachers, with, you know, various things like that, as well as teach you some more of the secrets of Hogwarts, I think. There's, there's <laughs> a little case, bit of that. In this case, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it, the students are a way to kind of like flesh out the school opportunities around it, what, mm -hmm. what we can do. And then those interactions, uh, different interactions with different characters uh, can also offer different choice points for the player. And then some of those things uh, can can affect things game-wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game. Um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice about guy the or just being a jerk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So sure. the scale really varies, but, but, uh, but those opportunities exist for the player. Wow, look at this. This is the Dada Defense Against the Dark Arts. Power. <laughs> Power, which uh, th this is one of my favorite locations in in the castle. Just visually, you come in here and just the the richness of it this is area very is very iconic, uh, very unique to anywhere else in the castle. Somebody else that we can talk to, uh, notably a, a younger student. Yeah, um, she looks like a first year or an eleven year old. Are you all right? Don't you know who I am? Zenobia Noak, the girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Everyone hates you. Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies and spoil sports. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no talent moon mind. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. I was hoping someone would want to play. Are you familiar with gobstones? Little balls, like marbles. Grand game. And if you lose, they spray you with a foul smelling liquid. I haven't much interest in a game that sprays you with odors. Only if you lose, which I never do. Or at least, not often. <sighs> People can be so cruel. Just because they're sprayed all over with smelly gobstone spit, it's their own fault for losing. Imelda is one of the worst losers. Everett and Astoria are terrible as well. And now those poor losers have taken my gobstones and hidden them in very high places all over the school. Sounds as if you caused the smelly situation and they responded accordingly. I didn't make the rules. Anyway, I can't work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone, perhaps a selfless and talented fifth year to help me. I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate the help. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I, I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, <laughs> you can feel for her, you can be a jerk to her, you can be like, gobstone sounds awful. It sounds like you're just mean. Like, uh, Yeah, and, and your opportunities to be mean there aren't over. So, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> that they continue. That, that's but, a good example of the... Uh, Gob gobstones too. I know people are gonna ask. Gobstones, uh, gobstones playable? They, may, may, they mentioned it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, gobstones is one of the things that is not playable in the game. Um, I know we've we've had to rip the bandaid off on a few things. I honestly, the, it's both an it's an amazing thing on the franchise. How many things about this like 
like speak to us as fans and that we want to turn into gameplay. And and there were calls that we had to make over the course of production of kind of like which things we will and won't include in the bucket. Yeah. Stones, just kind of for the overall Wizard's of the Chess. Yeah. Those are things that aren't featured. Aren't featured. Yeah. They're featured within the world. I, right? I'm glad they're mentioned. They're a part of the wizarding world. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time Our there was something that we, we, re we regretted because we couldn't include it. We also tried to figure out a way to make sure that it was included in the narrative, mm. included in the stories, mm. make sure that there's a way to kind of like acknowledge it, touch it, you know, and, and make it feel like it's definitely part of the world. And I know here, too, <laughs> I, we're, I we're like, like <laughs> <you're> getting, <laughs> I was like, we're in the Fist Against the Dark Arts class. I recognize that staircase to the left where we were just at, Andrew was walking by. I also recognize the dragon at the very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately we decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there a time of day and you know that kind of thing? Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is a day-night yeah. cycle. Yeah. yeah, there is a day-night cycle, but, uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so there's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we, and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities. You get to know the professors. Each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions, essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And but, I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... Uh, <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> Victorian so. high, you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High yeah. society. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't wonder you like this area because we built it for like the purebloods <laughs> and the Slytherins. Oh, and... come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, speaking of lived in, like, the sound effects again, the chatter of the communication that's happening and the footsteps, like, it just makes it feel more alive. Little events like that, the brooms going <laughs> by just saw overhead. Broom go by. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. The data tower was one example, but um, no two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the players, right, right. help you not get lost. Right. But uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the Mar Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and personality. I like that because yeah, it, it gives it character. does like Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character. No matter where you go, yeah. feels just a little bit different. Yeah, it's a sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow full and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters, <laughs> speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> I'll teach you a guys, too. <laughs> you know, we talked about building on lore, too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky, yeah. and he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyllshire. We know the fat lady hides there. hides behind it. That's right. <laughs> so the third, third book. <laughs> but sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where the portraits have kind of taken it over. And um, so the sound makes it really unique. All right. I got to call this out here. I know there's been some criticism in the past that uh, our trailers and our gameplay and what we've shown so far has not had enough owls. OK, <laughs> so here we are at the Owlry. We're looking directly at the Owlry to show you all of the owls. It's a Every, lot of owls. It's a lot of owls at the Owlry. I love all the, the owls. fog rolling down that Great way. callback. Great call. But, no, I, also, I also love that as I, I, one of my favorite things about just kind of going around on the outside of the school is that all those things that I see are places that I can go to, mm. that I can visit. I just love that sensation That's knowing so that cool. that is real. That lovely That's Scottish cool. countryside. We're uh, kind of closing out our, our mini tour of Hogwarts. And again, that was, a, was but a fraction of uh, this enormous castle. Uh, <laughs> but we're closing it out here in the clock tower. So another recognizable location. But this is where cross 
Lost Wands, which is the secret, not so secret dueling club is <laughs> uh, that the students have put together. Professors definitely know about it, but they think they're being clever. <laughs> uh, and it's run by this uh, Luke and Brattleby here. Who's in a younger year, but we kind of like that this, yeah, that he's running things. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat, because really in the game, this is going to be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally, this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we've set, up a, we've set up a training dummy, and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell, followed by four, what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells that the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling. Andrew's using one now. And you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you can mm -hmm. see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts. Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional spell diamonds, up to four additional ones, so that you can slot up to 16 spells you know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. And, and so you learn over the course of these events you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them. And, and that's how you access all those. Oh, man. It looks like we're about to get some action over here. Yeah. So this is, this is a great way to kind of learn how to pull things together, <laughs> um, so you pull those combos right together. Yeah. Tap, Accio, tap, tap, tap. Awesome. Well <laughs> Good done, job, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> and that's just against the dummy, but I mean... Uh... I'd say that's enough practice. You looked good out there. Thank you, Lucan. I say better to discover one's weaknesses during practice than during a duel. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. I think now we can, uh, we can take on something a little more challenging. It's going to shoot back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about uh, some more features of the combat system. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Crossed Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? We're on a PS5 dev kit here, so we're going to be able to kind of pause I'm the ready. pause <laughs> the action yeah, yeah. and talk about what you're seeing on the screen, because uh, there is about to be a lot going on. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. All right, here you can select uh, if you want to fight with somebody else, some of your classmates. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we're not. We want we want that action to feel a little more frantic <laughs> towards you to really get you that sense of of uh, of combat. So apparently you've uh, got quite the reputation because they've got you up against yeah. three people. Three, yeah. Apologies Off the God. jump. <laughs> Um, so I can I can explain this uh, just because I know people are going to go into it, but we can probably just kind of jump in. Um, so uh, you're not the only one that has Protego and the ability to deflect. The enemies do too. And we actually play with that when it comes to the spell casting. So you notice that there are different colored kind of shields yeah. around the different characters. And you also notice that your spells have different colors on them. So to help players understand kind of like the function of their spells, we're yeah. trying to put them into brackets. So there are damage spells, there are force spells, there are, um, I'm forgetting the other one, all of a sudden, control spells. Mm -hmm. And so those things for the player, uh -huh. they wind up also being a color indicator for which 
which actual spell to use to break the different shields that uh, enemies can use. That's that awesome. way it rewards kind of like that close right. attention that right. you're paying, paying and on things. We've got this paused here now, and you can kind of see all the elements on the screen, the, the halo around the avatar's head, yeah. each of the different shields uh, to kind of give us a, give us a breakdown yeah, of what's going on. Give us a breakdown of different things that you're saying. <laughs> um, so you notice at the top uh, that we're, we're kind of like calling out which enemy you currently have targeted and yeah. their level and health. And so, you know, as you target different characters, you'll be able to get that breakdown. Yeah. The, uh, the halo over your head, whenever an enemy is about to an, an attack, it's, it's almost like you have a little bit of a sixth sense for those things that are coming. <laughs> um, if you see the halo, it means there's an incoming attack. And if you tap the triangle button by default, mm -hmm. then that you will be able to deflect that attack that comes in oh. and off with yeah. your take. And okay. I love that yeah. deflect where it goes off and, and like hits things yeah. up yeah. and kind of breaks things off walls <laughs> too. But also, uh, if you hold the button, then it doesn't just it doesn't just deflect. It also deflects and turns around with a counter attack stupefy that actually stuns the enemy. And you can use that even in your combos and stuff. So yeah. if you're focused on a character, you know, and you're you're mm -hmm. doing your thing, yeah. and someone else attacks you, you can actually turn that attack into a direct attack on the person that you're comboing. Back into into gameplay here, Andrew's gonna pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here, win this duel. Look how fast it is. It's like a dance. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like the, um, we really felt like in the movies, there's almost like a, a it's kind of like a, there, there's call. this element of kind of like fencing from a very great yeah, distance. Yeah, that's and, such a good call. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we had to do with, with our controls and combat system in order to kind of capitalize on that idea that's pretty unique to the wizarding world. Yes. <laughs> well, perhaps you should try that next time. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance at winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. The next round is for all the gobstones, so to speak. And that is more or less gonna wrap it up for us for now, for what we wanted to show you. No, Character no. creator, <laughs> tour of Hogwarts, and uh, just that, that little taste of combat. Uh, but we, we didn't want to leave you without well, maybe a little taste of something that that we're uh, we may show in the future, may show next time. Uh, you know, so leaving the castle, uh, going out here. Um... More more owls uh, confirmed. <laughs> owl mail. Uh, there's the owlry again. Yes, all of the owls. Uh, but yeah, just heading out here again to show you, like from Hogwarts to the world beyond Hogwarts. And oh, man. The, this is not somewhere where we're going today, but uh, we'll, we will definitely be taking you in the future. Oh my God. A little glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. All right, so we're gonna wrap things up here, but uh, I, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, everything that you've seen. But I think, James, you may have a few other questions here at the end of things. So yes. while we're done with uh, what we're showing on the gameplay <laughs> side, uh, I know there's a few things that you wanna pick Alan and Boston's brains about. I would <laughs> love that, because there's a lot. <laughs> Let me grab it. All right, so um, some of these questions we did pull from the community. Uh, secretly, but I did full for the community. So, uh, and, and also from, I mean, going through this, I feel like they're, of, they're, yeah, you've come up with some things you want to talk a little more about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Elaborate on because we went through character customization, Hogwarts itself, and even combat. So, uh, this would be like for the both of you guys. Uh, will we be able to go back and change our character creation if we don't like it? Um, so not everything, but mm -hmm. there are certain things uh, with hairstyle, hair color, uh, so kind of like core shapes, okay. you know, like okay. with the body and face, not after the fact. Okay. Um, but there are lots of things. There's kind of like a barber shop in Hogsmeade that you can go to. And <laughs> of course, there's a wizard barber. You, right. yeah. Yeah. you could change your hair color for holidays or yeah. something right? oh my gosh that would be so cool <laughs> and the game features a lot of um appearance customization mm -hmm. in it so there's there's a ton of options there um but that that's in terms of like your character and stuff that you have mm -hmm. the character creator it's mm -hmm. like a it's like a, a smaller set of what you saw there okay 
Oh my gosh, awesome, awesome. Next question, what kind of leisurely activity can we do? Uh, can we study with our free time? I mean, what will we be doing just hanging out in Hogwarts? Um, because uh, as you progress through the game, there's a bunch of different missions that open up. Most yeah. of them are driven by different characters' personalities. You know, some of them want help getting up to hijinks, or they want, some of them want to just explore secrets in the castle right, because right. there are new secrets in our castle to explore. And so, um, so I think uh, there's, there's a bunch of things to do. And when it comes to class, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just kind of like the mainline stuff. There are kind of like extracurricular assignments, some of which are optional, some of which are, are kind of like uh, blockers for main mission. Kind of like okay. you can't go on this mission right. until you have the spell. And then the spell is open, you Got know, it. the assignment and how you complete it yeah, with, yeah. with your professor. And so there are opportunities to, um, to study, so to speak, like right. with that. Right. But they're really, they do all take, take uh, the form of our mission structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier. Wow. Um, let's get into some combat right quick. Uh, do spells have different levels or are they all equal? Do spells have different levels or are they all equal? I'm trying to think of how to describe that. So each spell has kind of like its own core identity and mm -hmm. what it does in the game mm -hmm. uh, with regards to both kind of like puzzling, world exploration, and and enemy combat and all that kind of stuff. Right. And then it's through the talent system, okay. right? Okay. When you go okay. into that, it's kind of like each of those spells has ways to kind of like advance and grow and change. Okay. And as you spend talents, in some cases, it even changes like the way you approach the the battlefield mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd say that's no more true than with like dark arts, for example. Right. And as you go down that line and you kind of play around with those talents, it really does start to kind of like affect even how you approach yeah. combat and how you think about the battlefield. I won't be touching the dark <laughs> art stuff, but I know many of you guys will be. Maybe on your second playthrough? <laughs> yeah, second playthrough, yeah. Okay. Dark Hufflepuff <laughs> coming, hashtag soon. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to close off with this question, and I, this will be for everybody, and we'll start with Boston. Um, with this game that you guys have been working on for however long and the excitement you guys have, what's one aspect of Hogwarts Legacy that you are excited for the fans to experience? Boston. I think I'm just excited for the fans to play through the world, specifically the castle, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe go read those books again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that either whether you're already a fan and you know love this game or this is your first introduction into the world, I, I hope they just point at each other in the best way possible. And um, I'm just excited for fans to get to finally go to Hogwarts and yeah, feel yeah. like they can own it and live there. I've lived there for five years. It's a, it's a great place to live. <laughs> Official fifth year. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's, it's really funny because because I my <laughs> I want to give a different answer and I will. Yeah. Uh, but but I actually feel like the most honest answer is really similar. Um, mm. Because my favorite thing when you know when running around playing the game and getting to know you know Hogwarts the way. Boston yeah. knows it because she knows the school and yeah. the lore better than I do, and thank God, <laughs> right? Because you want the person architecting it to really yeah. know that. Yeah. But um, when I when I rewatch the films or or I'm rereading passages from the books, mm -hmm. there's a different relationship to those things having played the game. Right. And so right. it's really looking over the edge and yeah. seeing seeing location. I'm like, oh my God, I'm right there. And in the movie saying, I know what's around that corner <laughs> in the film. Like yeah. if you go down this way, yeah. there's actually yeah. a thing over here mm -hmm. and there's this person over here and right. this thing happened. And, <laughs> and it just adds all this richness to everything that you already love. And not just that, but you're gonna add your own story. Yeah. So you know what happens around that corner because you did something. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the, the quick Great answer point. just to have something different is I just love being on a broom. <laughs> I just love <laughs> looking at the whole world and just being like, okay, I can just go. I can go there. And vantage point, yeah. It, it's, there's just something exhilarating about it yeah. that feels very different in that kind of open air and on that thing. It just like, it's kind of incredible, yeah. And, and wrapping it up, uh, you know, for me, it's just bringing the community together with it and sharing <laughs> those stories because mm. it is your story and you, you are going to be writing you know, this is this is your unique experience within this, and even within the things that are the same, it's going to be your unique experience. It's different yeah. from mine. It's different yeah. from we're all approaching it from different places, and uh, I think that's going to be really cool the way that everybody brings those things together. All right, and that's everything that we have to show you today. I know maybe it wasn't everything you wanted to see, but it was a whole lot of stuff. Character creator, a uh, uh, little mini tour of Hogwarts there, just a small part of it, a little bit of combat. 
um, and we've, we do have some more stuff coming up for you in the future. Hogwarts Legacy releases on February 10th, 2023, and is available for pre-order now. Uh, but that's going to do it from us. We're going to leave you with a little something else. But for now, uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>